Good Wednesday morning. How are you doing today? Things are going well here. Had a good night's rest, good night's sleep. We had a good uh, small group last night <clears throat> with our Tuesday group at Westway. Um, currently going through a book called Experiencing God, Knowing and Doing, uh, or Experiencing God, Knowing and Doing God's Will, um, which has been a really uh, been a really good study. We're doing that on Tuesday with one group of people, mostly families with kids, um, actually all families with kids. And then we're also doing that on Thursday nights in our home with another group of people. Um, so it's going really well. Um, good morning to Charlotte and Tony and Lori and Lori, Ruth, Roseanne. Um, thankful for each one of you this morning. Uh, we are reading from the book of Philippians. We're going to be in Good Morning Kitty. Um, we are going to be reading from Philippians 1, uh, beginning at verse 12 here in a moment. So if you have your Bible, go ahead and go ahead and grab that, and you can follow along. Uh, good morning, Christy. Um, got an update. Things seem to be going well for you, so glad to hear that. Um, there is <clears throat> um, a meal train that's been set up for the Leathermans as well, so we have lots of different things going on right now. Lots of ways to stay connected and serve and encourage other people. Um, look for, if, if you get our email, our weekly email, it goes out every Wednesday late in the afternoon. Um, there will be a way for you to uh, help meet some needs within our body. Um, and one of those is, um, is through Meal Train, uh, providing a meal. So I know the Leatherman's are going to want some meals, uh, are, need, are in need of meals, uh, Earl and Brenda are in need of meals, and that'll all, be, that'll all be in that email a little bit later today, so if you'd be on the lookout for that, that would be awesome. Um, good morning to Debbie and Carol. Um, so we are in Philippians chapter 1, beginning at verse 12. Um, <clears throat> Paul has just, um, Paul has just said that he is thankful for them, and he's told them what he's praying about for them. And now, um, he is going to tell them how they can pray for him. So, uh, verse 12 in Philippians chapter 1. And I want you to know, my dear brothers and sisters, that everything that has happened to me here has helped to spread the good news. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I am in chains because of Christ. And because of my imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. So we're going to continue going on here. Um, so Paul is writing this letter from prison. And it's important for us to have that, for, have that, for us to have that background information um, because Paul sounds pretty encouraged. Uh, in fact, if you, uh, well, if you, I was going to say if you read through the entire book of Philippians, which we're going to do, um, which we're doing now. If you, when, when you read through Philippians, um, Philippians is probably um, the most positive letter that Paul writes to any of the churches in the New Testament. Um, he, I don't think there's a single place where he says, um, <clears throat> You guys are really messing things up. There's a little bit of encouragement at the end between two people have, who have a dispute. But for the, for the most part, um, Philippians is an incredibly positive letter. Both like in the way that it's written, it's positive, and who it's to, it's like very positive, very encouraging. And what Paul is saying here is everything that has happened to him, even in jail has happened to spread the good news. And I wonder what it would be like for, for me, I wonder what it would be like for you, for you to be able to say, for me to be able to say, all of the things that have happened have happened for the spreading of the good news. To not fall into the little 21st century pity parties that we do of how hard our lives are and how difficult our lives are, um, and how tough our lives are, 
and poor me, woe is me, all of these things. Um, Paul doesn't have any of that. Um, Paul knows that everything that has happened to them, happened to him, has helped him spread the good news. For everyone here, including the whole palace guard, knows that I am in chains because of Christ. So Paul's not whining and complaining to the palace guard. He's telling them about Jesus. Because of my imprisonment, most of the believers here have gained confidence and boldly speak God's message without fear. So even then, like because Paul is in prison, the people that are, that are around him, the Christians that are around him, they are more confident and speak more boldly because of the fact that Paul is in prison. Like this is, they're not, you know, they're not running around asking themselves, what are we going to do? Paul's in prison. We have to get Paul out of prison. This is hindering the gospel. No, they're living in this space where they recognize that everything that has happened is happening and the gospel is spreading anyway. And I wonder what it would be like for us to have that same mindset when we think about the the things that we go through, the realities that we go through. If we were to just think about the last the last 11 months of our of our lives, um can we see God at work in the midst of that? That's like that is the question. Can we see God at work in the midst of the hardships and the realities and the situations and circumstances of our lives? But Paul's not done. <clears throat> it's true that some are preaching out of jealousy and rivalry. So some people were preaching, and he's going to get into a little bit about this. Some people are preaching the gospel out of false motives. They're jealous of Paul. They're trying to compete with Paul. But others preach about Christ with pure motives. They preach because they love me, because they know, for they know I have been appointed to defend the good news. Those others do not have pure motives as they preach about Christ. They preach with selfish ambition, not sincerely, intending to make my chains more painful for me. He's like, these people are glad Paul's in jail. Right, and if we this over the past, um, I think last Sunday. Well, over the past, I know we've done it over the past month. We talked about it when we talked about um, uh, communion at the beginning of January. There were some people in the church at Corinth that were divided into factions. Right, some people. Um, I I support Paul. I support Apollos. Right? Paul was not a very good public speaker. If you read through 1 Corinthians, you'll see that he kind of gives that hint. Apollos was a great speaker. So because Apollos speaks better than Paul, we're going to side with Apollos. Right? There are people who were jealous of what was happening with Paul. We see this today. We have seen this so much. Like, um, I'll say not lately, but here in Scott's Bluff, the churches did not work together, and they didn't work together because they were jealous of one another. They were, they were biting each other and infighting, and there was rivalry and competition and all of these kinds of things. And, and here's what Paul has to say about that. Even when someone preaches, even when someone preaches with selfish ambition and not sincerely, the gospel is being preached either way. But that doesn't matter. Whether their motives are false or genuine, the, God, the message about Jesus is preached either way. So I rejoice, and I will continue to rejoice. For I know that as you pray for me, and the Spirit of Jesus Christ helps me, this will lead to my deliverance. So Paul is living in this place where, where he is facing great persecution, and he is not crying about it. He's not whining about it. He's not complaining about it. He is on mission. Paul is not letting Paul is not letting the circumstances of his life get in the way of his mission to proclaim 
Jesus Christ. And it's so easy for us, <clears throat> it's so easy for us to do that. It's so easy for us to be so impacted by our situations and circumstances that we just, we don't proclaim Christ. Because our lives are hard. And that's not Paul. There are some people that are taking advantage of this. Oh, this is my chance, Paul. This is my chance to, to draw attention to myself because Paul's off in prison. So now I can go out and I can preach. And, <clears throat> and the, people who, the people who were focused on Paul and the people, you know, when Paul would speak, the crowd would gather. And now Paul's in prison. So now this is my chance to go out there and proclaim the gospel and have everyone look at me. You know, I think I, going back to what's happened in Scott's Bluff, you know, when churches struggled, that was the opportunity for other churches to pounce, right? Oh, that church split. I sure hope some of those people come to our church. Oh, something happened to that pastor. This is my opportunity now that that pastor's out of the way. Like, people will finally see, like, we are the right church. Number one, that's sin. But number two, Paul says... Whether people's motives are false or genuine, the gospel message about Jesus is being preached, so he is happy. So if those guys, like when Paul's in prison, if those guys want to go out and make, try and make, make a big name for themselves and preach the gospel, the gospel is still being preached. And people can still come to Christ despite that reality. For what Paul knows is that as people pray for him, he is helped by the Spirit of Jesus. And that leads to his deliverance. Because if you remember, we talked about this yesterday. Verse 11, chapter 1. May you always be filled with the fruit of your salvation, the righteous character produced in your life by Jesus Christ. That is the fruit of our salvation, the character that Jesus produces in our lives. That's the fruit of our salvation. And Paul in prison is being made more into the image of Jesus. This righteous character is produced in Paul's life when he is in prison. It's demonstrated because then he's preaching to the palace guard. He's teaching the other people. It's really easy for us to be a follower of Christ when life is going great, isn't it? It's really easy for us to, to talk about our great character when life is going well. Right? That's the simplest thing in the world. But what about who are we when life gets hard? That was we talked about at the beginning of January. When your life is pressed, what comes out? Paul's life is pressed because he's in prison. And what's coming out? The righteousness of God. The righteous character produced in his life by Jesus Christ. And we know this because he's telling the palace guards about Jesus. When Paul is pressed, when Paul is crushed, when he is, when he is beset upon from all sides, what comes out of Paul's life is the righteous character of from Jesus Christ. I would say Paul becomes more effective as a follower of Christ when he is pressed upon. And the question that we have to ask for ourselves is when we are pressed upon, do we become more effective for Jesus or less? Is Christ is is the righteous character produced in our life by Jesus Christ, does that come flowing out of us when we are pressed? Or do we get affected by our situations and circumstances and don't tell other people about Jesus because life is hard? And I'm not minimizing the hardness of life. But I think we have a choice when we are pressed. Are we going to reveal Christ is, is our real character Christ, or is it something else? 
And and based on what I see, like based on based on what I see people like post on social media, when they're pressed upon, the character of Christ is not the thing that gets revealed. Anger, bitterness, fear, anxiety, worry, lashing out at other people. Those are the things that I, that I frequently see when Christians are pressed upon. And God is calling us to something else. So we should pray about that. God, um, I'm thankful for your word this morning. I'm thankful for this example of Paul, that when he is pressed upon, what comes out is, is the righteous character produced in his life by Jesus Christ. And I pray, God, that we would have, that we would have the same thing get squeezed out of us when we are pressed. That people would not see Christians demonstrate fear and anxiety and worry and anger and bitterness. That we would not lash out. But your righteous character would pour out of us so that others would see you at work in our lives. And it's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. So I love you guys so much. I'm so thankful to be able to do this, to be able to share God's word in this way. Um, you know, imagine if Paul could have sit, sat in prison and, and done this. Um, hey, Philippians, um, we're going to FaceTime live at 7 a.m. Like, how encouraging would that have been? And I love the fact that we get to do this together. Um, tomorrow, we are going to continue to read um, from Philippians chapter 1. I would encourage you, as I do every day, uh, one of the best things you could do today is read Philippians 1 and see how all of what Paul is writing fits together. Okay, See where Paul is going throughout this text. Um, I love you guys, and I'm praying with you, and I'm praying for you today. I hope you have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow morning um, at 7 a.m., um, so have a super day and we'll talk to you soon.